Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the village of Walden. My name is Christian Farrell. I'm the director of veteran services right here in Orange County. Uh, before we get started today, I do want to recognize some of the elected officials that we have here in attendance. Uh, Orange County Legislator Mike Nagnostakis, right here from the village of Walden. <laughs> village of Walden Mayor Susan Rumbold. <laughs> village of Walden Trustees, Deputy Mayor Sean Hoffman. Sorry, Deputy Mayor Sean Hoffman. <laughs> village Trustee Jerry Mishk. Trustee Brenda Adams. <laughs> Trustee Brian Sebring. <laughs> Trustee John Ramos. <laughs> Village Clerk Tara Bliss. <laughs> Village Manager John Ravella. And let me please include another Orange County legislator who has just entered, Chris Ekus, in the back of the room. We have New York State Senator Bill Larkin. Town of Shuanggong Supervisor John Valk. And U.S. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today in Village Hall to honor a hero from the Forgotten War. Corporal John Chardulo served in the Korean War more than 60 years ago. He and more than three million other Americans answered the call in the 1950s to defend our freedom against enemies like of China and North Korea. He did so honorably and valiantly for the greatest army in the world, adhering to the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They say it's never too late to recognize someone for a job well done. Will Corporal Chardulo forgive us all for taking so long to say thank you for your service and sacrifice to our great country. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you to please rise if you can for the posting of the colors by the Valley Central High School JROTC, and please remain on your feet for the playing of the national anthem sung by Master Sergeant Mary Kay Messenger from the West Point Band. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets had glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet 
Order. Go. Now to deliver the invocation, Reverend Tom Jordan. Good afternoon. Really? Good afternoon. I would like to single out one person. 59 years of marriage, being his adult supervisor. Good catch, Corporal. <laughs> Bow your heads. We pray for all veterans, wherever they may be, that they're all home in our hearts. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters as they go and have gone with courage, determination to face forces of violence, weapons of destruction, and hearts filled with hate. You have nine amens, okay, nice and loud. For our Commander-in-Chief, President Barack Obama, Congressman Maloney, State Senator Larkin, and our political and military leaders, as they have tirelessly sought peaceful settlements to international disputes, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That we may keep clearly before us the defense of all human rights, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, we pray to the Lord Amen. that families, relatives, and friends of our veterans may be strengthened in times of concern and anxiety, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the Lord may help families with men and women in the armed forces to cope with daily challenges in the absence of their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. That our homeland will be preserved from violence and terrorism, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the nations of the world will seek to work together in harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the hearts of all men and women will be moved to pursue true peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That violence may overcome by peace that weapons of destruction may be transformed into tools of justice and hate may give way to true charity, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And finally, the grateful inspired by these veterans, especially John, who have given their lives for our service of our country, that they bravely face the challenges ahead, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And you, you are St. John. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may take a seat. Thank you. Our first speaker this afternoon is going to be right here from the village of Walden, Mayor Susan Rumwald. Good afternoon. On behalf of the citizens of the village of Walden, the village board, the village manager, the village clerk, I too would like to welcome you all here today. If great men were measured by their love of family, country, and community, John Shardulo would be 10 feet tall. <laughs> As it happens, great men are measured by the deeds that are done without fanfare and with the sole desire to see the world a better place in the doing of them. Those great men are selfless, have kind hearts, sturdy souls, and a compassionate nature that calls to the rest of us to follow their example and love life unconditionally. Great men don't need a refresher course in the definitions of words like patriot, father, husband, or neighbor. Instead, their lives are a reflection of those words and are bound together by the threads of the joy felt by those of us who are honored to know them. Great men seek nothing for themselves but spend their lives endeavoring to see to it that the rest of us can sleep well at night and be assured that they, along with the night stars, are guarding us and keeping us safe. 
I hope that as we leave here today, we will view great men with a new appreciation and realize that they are part of the foundation of this great country and deserve our respect and admiration. Though we may never know their true numbers, rest assured that many of them will touch our lives and we will all be better for it. And of everything that you hear about John Shardulo today, one of the things he would probably want you to remember most about him is that it wasn't too long ago when he could dance the legs off of Ginger Rogers even on his worst day. Congratulations, John. Our next speaker this afternoon continues to wear the uniform of our country. He's my boss and he has his hands full this afternoon. It's my honor to introduce our county executive, Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse. Eddie's my babysitters. Uh, I got Oscar watching the uh, you know, Literally a year ago uh, today at the veterans picnic, Senator Larkin and Sean Maloney watched my son while I spoke uh, to the uh, men and women that were gathered there today. Uh, now, Sean's uh, congressman staff is watching, uh, is watching my two daughters in the back. And my son, my wife told me for Mother's Day, uh, her only request for me is to watch the kids for the day and so she can get caught up on things. So uh, you have to bear with me. Uh, I, I am so honored to be here. I, I'm so thankful uh, that my friend uh, Congressman Maloney invited me uh, and, and Senator Larkin to participate in this. Uh, because so many times when we go through these type of ceremonies where we're giving out uh, what's uh, duly deserved to our men and women who served and it, uh, for some reason or another didn't uh, pan out and they didn't get the recognition they deserved, a lot of times it's too late. And uh, I'm honored to be here in front of, uh, to speak to John and, and, and his family and, and all his, his community to support him. A lot of things going on in our community today and what you read in the, in the press is what's wrong with America. How we can't uh, really get up and, and face the world and all the challenges that we have today. You rarely hear about the good things that this country still has. This is still the best country in the world. This is still the place that people fight for to come here every day. Ask anybody in Europe right now, ask anybody in the Middle East, this is still the beacon of hope and freedom. And it's, for, it's only for one reason. It's for men like John and, and the rest of the, the armed forces that have fought for that freedom. And it's still being fought for today. So I am so honored to be here as a county executive uh, you guys know me, most people know I do not um, hold any punches. I take this stuff very seriously. And uh, as a county executive where we do one veterans cemetery, we do one burial almost a day in Orange County. This is where the rubber hits the road. We have many men and women, 23,000 plus in Orange County that have served and wore the uniform. We had two of them that didn't make it a week before Christmas that lost their life in Afghanistan. So we owe it to these men and women we owe it to John to make sure that we stand up for him, that we do our best as citizens, whether you wear, wear the uniform or not, because what they fought for is our opportunity to continue to allow this country to continue and remain great, the wonderful place it is. I'm a first generation American. I am, I am honored because of, and I'm honored to be an American here. My parents came here because of guys like Bill Larkin who fought during World War II. And then you have men like John who fought in Korea, and the legacy continues. My dad is a first generation, when he, when he was an immigrant, served during Vietnam. This is the type of things that make America the great place it is. So I am so honored. John, I am so honored that you're actually here to, to see it. And, and what we do in the military, I don't think this is a World War II thing, Bill. You might have to correct me later on. And I got my kids and I'm running all over the place, so I apologize for that. But one of the newer things they do in the military, and now it's kind of gotten uh, normal, is you give out a challenge coin. And the way you give this out, and first of all, you give it out for two reasons. One is a drinking thing. We're not going to talk about that. But it, it, it's, always, it's, it's always given out for somebody that goes above and beyond that does something special for their community, for their family, for their country. And when it's given out, it's given out in handshake. 
And uh, John, I apologize, I've got a little baggage on me today, but I'd like to give you a challenge point for Orange County. We have a lot of legacy in the county. The Orange Blossoms is one of them. We fought for this country when we put in this, when they were creating this country, and that's what's uh, personified on this point. John, I'm so happy to be here, I'm proud of you, and I'm so happy that all of these men and women are here to support you and give you your due uh, respect and appreciation. God bless you. Our next speaker this afternoon is someone that uh, those in the veterans community know all too well. Uh, everyone in Orange County really knows him extremely well. I believe he retired from the United States Army with the rank of Colonel, but here in Orange County, we've elevated him to four-star general. And that is State Senator Bill Larkin. I have to stand over here, John, so I can watch you. You know, if you read the book, it says there in that little hip pamphlet today, oh, first of all, excuse me. Congressman, thank you very much for your efforts on behalf of a veteran of a cold, cold war. John, I went there in 1950. I was a youngster. I was a company commander of a unit one of the bravest and best that fought. And we got caught up in that freezing cold place called the Chosen River. But what you did for our country, you served in some of the most dangerous times. How you escaped, somebody was looking out for you back here. She said, you better get back here, John. You promised to marry me. <laughs> John. Medals are medals. You and I both know that. But the idea of is, you look around this room, John. I ask everybody to stand up and say, John, thank you for saving us as Americans. You know, John, John never talks about his combat record. The first time I met him, he said, yeah, I was a GI. I said, yeah, I was a GI too. Gee, I wish I was someplace else. That's probably what you were saying. But John, medals alone will not thank you for what you did for our country. You know, a lot of people say, well, I was gonna go, but I was doing this or I was doing that. When you raised your right hand that time, the first time, John, what did you say? I will defend and protect and save this great country of ours. And you did. And you're here today, and Congressman Maloney has extended himself and his efforts to make sure that you get the, we the weapons that you fought for, the medals of the Korean War. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I salute you. Next up on the program, right here from the village of Walden, or representing the village of Walden, from Orange County Legislative District Number 17, Mike Nagdastakis. It is such an honor to be here today. John, we're here for you today. We are so privileged to come out and salute you and honor you for everything you've done. You and the whole Shardulo family are being honored today. And take a look around this room. Look at all these people out here from the village of Walden. I've said it before, and John, I'm gonna say it again. The village of Walden is the best village in all of Orange County and its people. <laughs> John, they're all here for you, because if it wasn't for you and what you did, 
and veterans like yourself, people have said it before, really, none of us would be sitting here. This wouldn't be the greatest country in the world if it wasn't for your efforts. Some of us wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for your efforts. Certainly, we wouldn't be here prospering the way we do. So that's why we're here today. We're thanking you for your service to this nation. And let me tell you, as an elected official, each one of us should be taking veterans and placing them number one on our list of priorities. I know I certainly do that as a county legislator. I know a lot of my other elected officials do, but I want to single out one person in particular. I've had the honor and the privilege of serving as a legislator for six years, and I've served with Congress people that represented this district. And I'm going to tell you, nobody Nobody has worked as hard as Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney for veterans, and I hope every single one of us remember that as we move forward. So, John, thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Our next speaker. Oh, here we go. Our next speaker. There's a lot of microphones up here. The next speaker is someone who knows Corporal Chardulo in a different way than a lot of the folks you've already heard from. And that is someone who calls him dad. Now we're gonna hear from his son, Michael Chardulo. Thank you, Christian. On behalf of our family, we want to thank our Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney and his staff member Oscar Durham, Dunham, New York State Senator Bill Larkin, and your staff, Brian Marr, and Megan Hulbert. Um, Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse, nice to see you back in Walden again. Um, our Representative Mike Aganagastakis. I appreciate the kind words. And where's my mayor? Sue. I, you're just amazing. You are a family friend and you are amazing. I'd also like to thank our village clerk, uh, Tara Bliss, and the director of the library, Jenny Niedemeyer, for helping set up this event. Thank you for what you've done. I'll get there. How did we get to this day? Everybody's been asking me, well, 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 how did this happen? How did everybody find out all about this stuff? I was speaking to my father's youngest brother, my Uncle Richie, and he told me he was speaking to, I look at you when I get choked up. <laughs> he was speaking to his brothers, Uncle Carmine and Uncle Bobby, his two other brothers, and they said, you know, your dad was a veteran of the Korean War. You should reach out to the VA. He could be probably getting some help. And he said, all you have to do is find his paperwork and make a phone call. I said, okay. I said, uh, you need to talk to my sister Kathy and the two of you work it out. Well, my sister Kathy got a hold of my father's paperwork. And a week later, she called me and she said, did you realize daddy got medals in the Korean War? I never saw the medals. Did you ever see them? No. Nope. Who's got them? We don't know. Kathy says, I want my father to have those medals. Okay, let's see what we can do. Thinking of who I can reach out to, how this is going to happen, and it dawns on me. I'm going to reach out to Senator Larkin's office, and I'm going to talk to my good friend, Brian Barr. Brian, this is what we're trying to do. What do you think? Mike? This is what our office does all the time. I said, do you really think this is going to happen? I'm going to give it to Megan. It'll happen. <laughs> OK? So thank God for Megan. And this is why we're all. And then it was a short couple of weeks after that, my sister Kathy got a call from the congressman's office. Kathy, we have your father's medals. Let's set up a day for this presentation. And here we are today. And I thank Brian and Megan for all their hard work. Thank you. I 
I wish I could sit up here today and tell you war stories from Korea, but I can tell you, my father never spoke much about it. I guess it was his way of protecting his family from the ugliness of war. When we started to all figure all this out, Porkchop Hill was a movie. We never knew anything about it. When you looked into it, Porkchop Hill was not a place that anyone ever wanted to be. And he spent four months there. And now I understand why he didn't talk about it. So, Dad, as we get older, I see and I look at all your five children. And every one of us have a part of you in us. Kathy and I went into the printing business. Your son, Dougie, Dougie was given the Founders Day Award, which is an honor that is given to a merchant who has the most positive effect on a youth in his community, just like you, many youth awards. Your son, Richie, he's built like you. He's tough, he's feisty, he's a hard worker, and he has your values of large families. <laughs> and your son, John Peter, moves to Pennsylvania. What does he do? He finds the first little league field, volunteers to be an umpire, just like his father. The same way you did the first week you came to the village of Walden. So, and your four sons also have another part of you in it. Just look at our hairline. <laughs> Corporal John Carmine Chardulo. I'm going to get through this. United States Army. Your family, their five children, your five children, their husband, their wives, your 15 grandchildren, your six great grandchildren, your three brothers, and all of their family. Thank you for your service for our country. And dad, and dad, your family thanks you for being the head of our family, for being our dad, and always there whenever we needed you. And we are truly blessed because you are the best. Thank you. You've heard a lot about him and his office today. Uh, allow me to just pile on just a little bit more. In my two years in the position of Director of Orange County's Veterans Service Agency, I've got nothing but the support of Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney and his staff. And rest assured, speaking for the other 23,000 veterans out there of Orange County, I know Congressman Maloney has got our back when he's here locally and down in Washington, D.C. It's my honor and pleasure now to introduce Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to be here, isn't it? Uh, look at this room. Uh, this is fantastic. You know, um, now that I've done this job for about three years, there are certain things that uh, stand out as among the very best days in a job like this. And uh, in, my, in the short time that it's been my privilege to uh, be your voice and your, vo and your vote in Washington, uh, nothing has been more meaningful to me than days like today, where we have been able to recognize uh, men like you, sir. And, and invariably, uh, I do that in the presence of uh, my good friend, Senator Larkin. And there's no one I follow on the stage who does a better job uh, at this job of representing all of you in the places where it matters. And he gets up every day and he works so hard at it. 
and especially at uh, veterans events, um, you see the true character of that man. So it's an honor to serve with you, sir. It's an honor to be your friend. Uh, thank you for being here today and all you've done for our communities. And I want to thank uh, the mayor for your beautiful words. Thank you, Mary Kay, for your beautiful uh, voice. We hear, I hear her sing that national anthem, and it's wonderful every time. I, I hear it about twice a week. That's wonderful. You're always wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, all, uh, uh, all your trustees, and uh, thank you, county legislator, for your uh, kind words. Um, but mostly, I want to talk about this gang over here on the sideline. Oh, and I have to thank Christian Farrell. This man does a great job. Um, as a, and, and, uh, and Dad of the Year, Steve Newhouse back there with, uh, with all those kids. Um, I'm going to post this on Facebook so your wife knows you actually took care of the kids, don't worry. And uh, I'm glad I didn't have to hold them for once at one of these events. I got three of my own who are, uh, I have two of my own kids here. Um, where'd you guys go? They're back there trying to hide. And, uh, and I like to bring my kids to these events so they can see what a real hero looks like. Um, uh, you know, they see a lot of stuff on TV and they hear a lot of stuff in their music, but they don't often see true heroes uh, live in the flesh up close, uh, but they can at an event like this. Um, so I'm glad you guys came. And I have to tell you, um, you know, these events are a little tough for me, sir, because I lost my own dad uh, within the last year. Um, he had a bride of 65 years. I know you and Claire are celebrating your 59th, or just did celebrate your 59th wedding anniversary. Um, I know you have five kids. You all here? Most of you are here, right? You all here? I know you all had 15 children. You've been busy these years, do a little. My goodness. <laughs> had a long winter or something. And, uh, and, uh, and I, know you got, I know you got six great-grandchildren, which is awesome. And, uh, and you know, I have to tell you, my dad um, was 87 when he passed away. Um, your son Mike and I were talking uh, when I came in this afternoon, and he said something that was very familiar to me. He said, you know, my dad never talked about his service. And I said, can I tell you something? My dad never talked about his service. And I don't think I ever would have found out about my dad's service if I hadn't beat it out of him at Thanksgiving one year uh, because my brothers had told me a little bit about that. And I know you have four brothers. Uh, well, I'm one of five brothers. And, uh, and, you know, my dad was pretty seriously injured on the USS Manchester. He was 18, 19 years old. Um, wasn't sure he was going to walk again. Spent about a year of his life trying to get well, about three months in a full body cast in Naval Hospital in Newport, Rhode Island. And, um, and he said, what got him through it was that he got a letter every day from his high school sweetheart. And she wrote him every single day he was in the military. And they would come in bunches, because they didn't come all at once, but he would order them chronologically, and then he would read about her day every day. And he said uh, that that's when he knew there was something to get out of that bed for. And it's what got him out of that bed. And without that help, without that, without that knowledge that there was a life out there waiting for him, he wasn't sure he was going to do that. But he did get out of that bed, and he, and he married that girl. They were together for 65 years. They had six children together, and I'm the youngest one. And, and what he said to me when I finally got him to talk about his service uh, was very short. What he said was, you know, son, a, a lot of guys didn't get to come back. That's all he said. But I knew just what he meant. I mean, he meant that he had had 65 years with my mom, that he had six great kids, that we had eight or 10 grandkids among us at that time, and, and that he had gotten to live his dream, and he had gotten to start a business and raise his family and be in his community and coach Little League and do all the things that we all take for granted every day. But always, always, for his long life, he carried it around with him, that his friends from high school the kids who played football with him, the guys he had grown up with, some of them didn't get to do that. They never came back. And there's guys on Port Chap Hill who never got to come back. And there's guys in every major engagement this country has ever had who were denied the opportunity that the rest of us take for granted. And it is only because of their sacrifice that the rest of us enjoy those freedoms. And so thank you for allowing me to play a small part in 
in honoring you today for your service because it allows us to honor all the men who never came back and women. It allows me to think about and honor my old man, so thank you for that. And it reminds us what's best about our country, that with all the trouble, with all the trouble, with all the problems we have, with all of our challenges, with all the negative stuff, with all the, all the anger that we see sometimes in our politics, that we should remember that there's nothing wrong with this country that can't be fixed by what's right with this country, and there is nothing wrong with this community or this congressional district or this nation of the United States that can't be fixed by what's right with men like John Shardulo. And we should remember that. We should remember who we are. Now, now we have a bunch of medals for you today, sir. We have four in particular. Um, and, and I'm going to present them to you momentarily. Um, and they will include the National uh, Defense Service Medal for your service. They will, uh, they will include the Korean Service Medal with two bronze service stars, the Combat Infantry Badge First Award, and the United Nations Service Medal. And, and as, as the other speaker said, I'm sorry it's taken this, this long, but selfishly, I'm glad that I was able to be here for it because it's just always so inspiring to me and it's always such a wonderful reminder of the obligations we have. You know, we shouldn't forget that just this week, uh, we lost a member of, uh, of a SEAL team in Iraq. Three days ago, I was in Jordan along the Syrian border. Um, and I visited personally with the New Yorkers and with the American service members who are serving right now, right as we speak, at the Joint Training Center a couple of miles south of the, of the Syrian border, a stone's throw from where uh, ISIS is controlling territory. And if you don't think they're in a combat role, you're wrong, because, because they go in to train and assist, to advise the Peshmerga, as this young man did, Charles Keating IV, and some of them are losing their lives. But all of them are risking their lives. And all of them are putting their lives in the line for all of us. So just as you did in the 1950s, uh, and as so many did before you and since, right now, on battlefields around the world, young Americans are once again answering that call. And so as we honor you today, we also honor them. We remind ourselves, and hopefully those serving, that as long as it takes, we're going to keep faith with that service. We're going to recognize that service. And we're going to remember that the rest of us wouldn't have the lives we do without it. So thank you. God bless you. God bless your family. Uh, and it's now my honor to, uh, to present you with these long overdue but so well-deserved commendations. Thank you, sir.
much longer you're going to get it right. <laughs> you have come to see my dad get his medals. It means so much to our whole family. But first I have a citation from the New York State Assembly from Claudia Tenney. This is for you, Dad. When I saw my dad's DD-214, I was just amazed at what I saw, and I told my brother Mike, he needs to get these medals. And he said, do you just want them mailed, or you want them presented to him? And I said, present them to him because he deserves it, because he was not only a Korean War veteran, but he is the best father, and he loves his community, and he has done so much for all of us. He's made me so proud throughout my life, and he's a role model that many people should look up to. And I love you, and I thank you for everything that you did for us and our family. I just want to invite you all to join us for some food and come see my dad and look at those beautiful medals he deserves. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing, if you would, uh, for our benediction delivered by Reverend Jordan. Actually, I'd like to amend that. Yeah. I want all the veterans to stay standing. I want everybody else to sit. Capiche? Thank each of you for stealing my thunder. <laughs> St. Bill, stand. St. John. My father was a Mustanger in World War II with the 42nd Rainbow Division. Never talked about his service, but always instilled in me that he was never able to go to Korea. Chosun Reservoir and all the other places, Pork Chop Hill, God bless the both of you and all the Korean veterans here. I had to bury two young veterans last year in the Orange County Veterans Cemetery. And I swore from that day I'd start doing something. And just recently I incorporated a 501c nonprofit to raise PTSD service dogs. I've had two. But I'm asking your permission to name the next one Claire. <laughs> my 
fellow veterans, bravo Zulu. All right, these are called the reflections of healing for veterans and service people. Bow your heads. For our troops, for the spouses of our troops, for the sons and daughters of our troops, for the parents of our troops, for those who wait our troops return, for government leaders, especially those here today, for courage in time of battle, for deceased veterans, for families and friends left at home on the eve of battle, for hope in the midst of destruction, for those in command, for fellow combatants, for the innocent victims of war, for our own healing, for the silent intentions of our hearts. Lord God, creator of mankind and author of peace, as we are forever mindful of the cost paid for liberty we possess, we ask you to bless the members of our armed forces, our veterans, and especially all those here present. Give them courage, hope, and strength. May they ever experience your firm support your gentle love and compassionate healing. Be their power and protector, leading them from darkness to light. To you be all glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. Amen. Come on. Amen. Thank you. God bless each one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I ask you to please rise as we get ready to wrap up today's ceremony. I welcome back to the stage Army Master Sergeant Mary Kay Messenger, who will play the Army song, followed by the retirement of the colors. Mary, go. I also want to say thank you, John, um, to all veterans. The reason I'm here today is because of you and for my father, who also shared in the Korean War and was, was severely injured at Porkchop Hill. Thank you. March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. Wear the army, I'm proud of our name. Wear the army, I'm proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won and the army goes rolling along then it's hi hi hey the army's on its way count off the cadence loud and strong for wherever we go you will always know that the army goes rolling along color guard retire the colors right hey forward march Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's ceremony. I want to thank you all for attending and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you.